Today we're going to explore the world of logo design. So I know there are so many ways to tackle this topic and we're not going to just design a single logo today. I kind of want to walk you through diving into Illustrator and thinking about logos from a minimalist standpoint and a geometric standpoint. I'm very inspired by mid-century modern logos for today's topic and tutorial. Designers like Paul Rand, you know, logos from yesteryear like the ABC logo and Apple and Nike, Adidas. There are so many extremely simple icons and symbols that have stood the test of time. And I think that is what's missing in a lot of graphic design today. And that's why I want to cover that today, because if you are a new graphic designer, if you're a junior, if you're just starting to learn about how to use Illustrator and how to think about logo design, stay tuned. We are going to go over so much of this um, and really just dive into Illustrator and get loose and messy. So let's begin. Okay, so before we dive in, let's review a few logos to see examples and to be inspired and especially looking back at historical logos, because I think that's the thing that's missing today is a lot of people are just turning to Pinterest. Sometimes people are uploading old things on Pinterest, but a lot of same things are being regurgitated today. And there's a lot of really great resources and tools to look through old logos. So right now I am going to walk us through um, a really great site. This is not sponsored by any means, but I've been following them and I'm subscribed to their newsletter. It's called Logo Archive um, and it is Put out by Richard Baird. It's a really great resource and tool as you can see even just scrolling through the archives it's about it's, I think it's eight or ten dollars a month but there's so much there's so much goodness in here so many geometric and very shape reduced esque logos and so this is going to be really helpful in terms of looking at what's out there what's been done before um, and when you click on a logo it even explains who it was designed by and for and what year this is from. So this is a 1948 um, and it's got all sorts of different tags and things like that too. So if we wanted to look at more symmetrical logos, for example, um, then we can explore these as well. But um, this is just a starting point just to kind of get us talking through logo design and what's really great. I especially love that one of the popular searches on here is one and only Paul Rand. Um, there's, he's done so many great logos and he, of course, is one of the most iconic logo designers of this era as well. Let's switch over to our canvas. I'm working in Illustrator and I'm only going to be working in black and white because really if a logo doesn't work in black and white, it's never going to work in any other format. And black and white really is a good starting place to be at. Um, so the circle, <laughs> there are so many things that you can do with a circle alone and thinking through circular moments and circular means, um, creating, um, I would say thinking through repetition and duplication is what's really key here. So, um, if you want something that feels uncomfortably close, um, maybe that is part of what you're trying to achieve and whatever white space comes out of that too. And really just exploring duplicating and noticing the kinds of white space that you'll get out of that. Really logo design is all about exploration. Sometimes you don't know where you're going or where you're headed until you get there. Um, but it's really just about creating, duplicating, um, creating either solid shapes or lines um, and there's all sorts of tools to use too so like here's this is just like working off of memory I have no idea here's something like the the Olympics logo um, and of course centering these things will be part of the exactness of these kinds of logos is creating symmetry and alignment. Um, and, and not only that, but like working through um, creating even inner and outer moments of shapes too. 
So going down here, we have our pass tool. You can offset a pass and you can go larger or you can go in the negative so it goes on the inside. Um, and you can do that again where you'd copy, paste, um, and then go back through that same exact radial moment. Um, and like if you wanted to pull this out and have fun with this, there's so many different things that you could do and really explore and discovering like different shapes and different ways of overlapping shapes and combining them um, big or small. Um, and like creating lines and figuring out what's working and if something's too much to start reducing from there. But like say I wanted to create something that was representative of something too. I think that's the trick here is a lot of this stuff lives in the abstract and lives in this space of um, reduced by shapes, but meant to be representational. So maybe for example, this is going to be a four leaf clover and we're going to tilt it, or maybe it is like a spade, for example, or something like that. And then creating the, the shapes that will go through it too. Um, and like aligning these things, for example. Um, and I don't know, maybe this will go further in and maybe we'll remove this line so that it's actually part of that circular shape. Um, and you know, you could go big or small here, like maybe this is starting to create a tree and maybe, um, maybe there's a lot worth exploring there too. Like maybe actually what I would do is probably just take one of these and make it solid. Oops, those are connected. And maybe I'm going to start creating like a pattern or a shape out of this too. Um, and I would say one thing that's really great or can be your friend is the Pathfinder tool. Um, another great asset or tool would be the distributing objects too. So making sure that all of these are evenly distributed. Um, and then of course, duplicating from there to keep creating um, all of these and then grouping them. I'm gonna group these together um, and align them and distribute them again so that we're getting something that feels a little more exact. And then maybe I want this to be um, like a flower logo or um, an actual tree logo, for example. Kind of reminds me of those old, uh, or <laughs> kind of reminds me of like the old, an old dandelion or like a dying dandelion that you're gonna blow. Um, it also kind of reminds me of the speaker, very like Dieter Rams kind of feeling too. Um, but then, yeah, like if I was going to keep going from here, for example, up or down or side to side, maybe, um, another fun approach to, to doing this is you could even create like a pattern out of this and then start deleting elements too. So for example, if we were gonna make this actually a little wider, adding a few more dots to this, I really don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just kind of showing the exploration of all of this. Um, <clears throat> but say I went here and then even removed some dots to make it feel a little more organic um, and to kind of explore where that could go. Um, this could even, I feel like you could even 
it could be grape-like or tree-like, or um, you could even take some of these and turn them into leaves if you wanted to. So um, the way that I would approach that, actually all of these are on like a different axis, but um, I would take the direct select tool and move up or down and even uh, close those um, bezier, I believe it's called, uh, lines, and maybe even pull this one out a little more too. Um, you could either do that or you could make, maybe you wanted to make a leaf from a an actual line too, so you can use the width tool and, um, oops, I want it on both sides though. and pull that out. I feel like that's kind of helping me create a slightly more curved leaf too. Um, and then maybe I'll expand the appearance. Um, okay, so then now let's create a pattern of sorts too. So maybe some leaves are in this direction and maybe some leaves are in the other direction. So I could just completely flip it vertically and do that over again. So I'm just kind of using these circles as my placeholder um, to create those. And then something that's kind of fun that's happening here too is it's almost becoming this like fruit-like idea as well. So, um, so again, this is like, we're not looking to make an exact logo of something. We're just kind of really diving into Illustrator as a tool and thinking through geometry and shapes of these things as well. Um, and so you could create some really fun, playful fruit logos out of this too, or maybe you wanted like a much bigger fruit um, with smaller leaves. And it could be like if you wanted to create something that felt fruit and um, even floral, that could be really interesting, uh, a really interesting idea too. Um, but again, I'm just like grouping things and aligning them. And, um, and then if we were to like duplicate this again and rotate it, um, then you can start to really uncover a few ideas. And maybe you wanted to go even more out from here too, I would probably um, even start working on like one corner or one shape and duplicate from there. So if we were to do, for example, something like this, where we're kind of pulling out these leaves a little more that almost feel like a flower and a sunburst moment. Um, and like, if you wanted to figure out a way to make this feel like a little more fruit-like, then maybe that is, maybe that could be something as simple as making this white, scaling it down. Whoops, I'm going to have to expand that. And, um, creating seeds out of this too. Like maybe there was, I wonder if that'll read as like a... Um, apple or a pear. Just kind of eyeballing some of this too for the sake of time, but um, but yeah, like maybe that could be something that helps the the seed-like nature of this fruit. If we wanted to still hold on to a fruit idea that's also being floral or being uh, sun-like, and then. Um, and then, yeah, I guess from the outside here, we have, we could duplicate this over to this side, flip it vertically. Um, another really great tool that I use is from View. You can look at the pixel preview. So it's just Command Shift Y, oops, or just Command Y. Well, I hit 
I hit command Y so that I can see some of these things and make sure that they're actually lining up to and wanting to actually replace that perfectly. And yeah, I mean, you really could just keep going from here. Um, the other fun thing about circles is you, let's dive into the Pathfinder tool. So getting into different circle moments, um, this is kind of like a Venn diagram kind of a moment where you're gonna remove the white space between those. Um, and so that could get really fun if you start creating circles on circles and, and creating like bite-sized things outside of and, and removing negative spaces. Um, or of course you can combine them. So now it's a single shape and going from there. Um, and then again, removing shapes too. Um, so really it's just about like exploring what shapes and things you can create out of this and it becomes very experimental. Um, and then like another thing too is um, actually, so yeah, that's, those are circles. Um, let's move into more of a linear approach to some of this too. So going to, let's create completely different artboard. Um, and let's start creating out of lines or rectangles. So grabbing our rectangle tool, um, I always just hit M or L when I want a circle or a rectangle. Um, and you can create um, different moments and repetitions out of this too. So whether you wanted to go repeat like this, or if you wanted to go from small to big, um, then you can create the either end of those and then um, go up to object and blend and make and you can blend all sorts of different shapes and sizes and lengths into each other too um, and what I also like to do from here is go into blend options and select how many you want in here so it could be as few as two, or maybe we really want to fill this out to like six or five or four. Um, and then you'd basically start creating these moments from here. Um, let's talk about uh, the radial tools too. So um, one thing that can be pretty fun about creating some of these mo marks and going back to that logo archive too is um, it, it's exploring things not only in a 2D but flat dimension where it really is just graphic and you're looking at things that feel like they're 3D but they're not. But then it's also exploring um, the like radial aspects of those things and creating repetition and circular moments and movements out of a single shape too. So um, I feel like one thing that's really in right now is checkerboard. Is anyone loving this checkerboard trend? There's like checkerboard rugs and, and artwork and pillows. But what if we were to create a radial logo out of a checkerboard? So there's a couple ways that we could do this. Um, if you were to just completely do it like kind of going off um, on your own with this and trying to explore how to create something like this, then you can just, sometimes I start at opposite ends and work my right way around a circle um, and seeing how maybe this sometimes helps me figure out like how many I want to go and how big I want to go. Um, but to get more exact with some of these things too, um, what I do is I use this rotate tool and you can use um, 360 as like a mathematical measure of I want this to go around 360 maybe 10 times or 12 times. In fact, I think I want to go a little smaller than this and a little wider. I'm going to separate these two. And then um, 
copy and paste. So there's actually two sitting there. And then now I'm going to use, whoops, I'm just, now I'm going to use the rotate tool and define that 360. So maybe I want this to go around like six times. So I'd actually do 360 divided by six and then copy and paste that again and hit rotate. Um, or you can hit command D um, to do that again. The thing about this though is um, it's kind of a trial and error too in kind of figuring out how, how many you would need um, if you were to copy and paste this and rotate this a little one more and fill in the gaps, you could do that. Um, or we can start back over and do it times 12. So um, copy and paste, hit rotate, and now let's do 360 divided by 12. And then you do command C, command F, command D, command C, F, D, C, F, D, C, F, D until you get all the way around the circle. And then this could be um, a moment where you want to, now we wanna to go to like a bigger circle outside of that, right? Um, and we want this same shape size. So just doing this in like a very simplified way, um, I would probably now rotate this even more so let's put one on the other end and let's uh, rotate and now let's do 360 divided by 12, uh, 24. So now it's sitting on those exact corners um, based on that like mathematical measurement. And then now we're going to do um, now we're going to have to rotate back to 12. So it'd be 360 divided by 12 to get back to skipping every other. So CFD, CFD, um, until I get this kind of a thing too. So that could be really fun. Um, a really fun geometric sun that's almost like a checkerboard sun. And I could see this being for a really fun, playful brand. And maybe you'd put something in the middle. Um, I mean, you can, I feel like smiley faces are all the rage right now. Um, but you could even put a smiley face in there, um, and figuring out like the nuances of that and, um, how to make it feel geometric too. Um, you could even take your width tool and, um, give them kind of an open mouth, but Anyways, this is like definitely not mid-century anymore and is definitely feeling a little more playful and um, hippie-like, but um, I think that's what's fun about living today is you can really grab inspiration from all sorts of decades and move and mix them together and creating something that feels very dynamic and very rooted in nostalgia and in um, old world things and stuff like that. Using that radial idea, going back to our circles, um, that can also be something you can use for the circles or the leaves. Um, so if I wanted to create like a radial moment out of circles, for example, I would do that same exact thing where I would group these, I would hit copy and paste and rotate. Um, and maybe I'll do th 360 divided by, I think it has to be an even number but I'm actually not sure. I've also done this before where it didn't match um, but there you have a radial circle um, may, but the thing about stuff like the thing about these kinds of logos too is you want to simplify 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 so like if I did that and realized there's no way that's going to be readable at small scales then making it bigger we could even have fun with this so Let's like create some pathfinder moments with this circle. Um, let's make this bigger. Um, we're gonna actually lose one of these so that I can just duplicate out of the same one. And what if I did this, flipped this, 
horizontally so they're facing each other and really figured out what I could make out of this. Maybe it'll end up feeling a little more floral. Um, actually, I kind of want to make this overlap a little more. It's kind of giving me moon, crescent moon vibes too. So I have a feeling this is going to turn out looking floral and like uh, moon cycles kind of a thing. But again, I'm grouping this and then I'm going to um, hit my copy and paste and rotate tool. And then let's see if I can get maybe like eight out of this. Looks pretty good. Or maybe, um, what if I did a point, 7.5? Oh, that's not what I want. 360 divided by nine. 360 <laughs> divided by 9.5. Oh, I meant to do 8.5. 8.5. Oh my goodness, this is gonna drive me crazy. 40? No. Five? <laughs> About 43% or degrees. 44 degrees. Okay, that looks good. So let's do that again. Copy paste D. Oh yeah, it doesn't complete. But um, if that's the case, I would probably scale these up a little more so that they can be completely filled in or maybe that's the goal and maybe you want this to sit right in between here and maybe it makes sense to um, view this on a grid show grid and I would I would <laughs> I haven't been using a grid this whole time but I would highly recommend using a grid when it comes to logos like this too because these really are all about being exact and being symmetrical and proportional and all of that too. Um, but oops, maybe this is kind of gives me like acorn squash vibes too. <laughs> um, I'm just going to select all of these and group them all and separate them out a little bit too. Um, just to see what that looks like. But yeah, I mean, this is kind of just setting up some of these basic tools and tricks. There's so many ways that I could take this and I really was just like diving in with no goal in particular, but maybe we could do this again sometime and I can actually start with sketches and start with an actual concept and creative brief and figuring out what is my goal, what kinds of logos make sense for this brand and um, what, how many versions of that kind of a symbol can I create to present to a client. So thank you for joining me today. Hopefully this was helpful. I know this was very simplified, very basic, um, definitely intro level kind of design and exploration. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people out there who are wanting to dive into design and don't really know where to start. So hopefully this was a great starting point. Um, but please subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Um, I'm hoping to create even more tutorials and um, design 101 kind of videos too. So really wanting to um, share a little bit of my knowledge of uh, good graphic design. So thank you again and I'll see you later.